Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. And in this episode, we are going to divert a little bit from our regular series. And we are going to explore how to upload CV and read our CV using OpenAI and just regular JavaScript and HTML. So I have on the screen what we are going to achieve in the episode. So on the screen, you can see a profile.pdf file. And this is my CV I extracted from my LinkedIn account. And that's what I'm going to upload here and see if it can retrieve it. Okay, so we've uploaded this file and now we can click on upload. All right, so after reading the CV, here is what it came up with. So software engineer. So it was able to read through my stuff and fill out all this information. And just so you know, let me show you what the CV itself looks like. So here's the CV itself. So we have all this. So you can see just a random stuff. It's not really uh, for a specific layout. So this is from um, LinkedIn. And the reason why we are able to pull this off and not bother about any OCR, because that tends to be the way we um, follow things through initially. So we use an OCR to get the information we need. But with OpenAI's visibility, it's capable of understanding what it's needed and get all the information we need. So without any further ado, let's get into our code and actually see how we are able to create this. So I'm going to create a new tab and I can close this because yeah, we won't be working with that for a while. And inside my CV extractor, I'm going to create my front end and back end folder and start things from there. So I have made two directories within my CV extractor, front end and back end. So if I do LS, we get to see it. And this is a PDF file, as we can see. So I'm going to go into the front end for now and work on it. So within the front end, I'm going to have two files, the index.html file, this style.css, and the script.js. It's going to be just vanilla JavaScript. All right. So according to our UI is quite straightforward. We have the editor, we have a file, and we have the upload button. That's all. So it's quite simple. So based on the structure we have for the UI, A is what the code looks like. So we have our basic HTML. We have the add CV upload. We have link to the style sheets, which is this. Then we have link to the JavaScript, which is this. Then within our body, we have the H1 tag for CV upload. We have the class form. So this is just holding the input field together. So we have the input for the file. And according to this file, it's great to accept only doc, docs file, and PDF file. Then finally, we have the button to upload the whole thing. Then finally, when we have the result of our upload, we have this div to hold it together. And now, I can start the server in another port. So I'm using HTTP server. So HTTP server, then port 4001 or rather 4100. Okay. All right. So this is what we have for now. And the UI for this is not that bad as well, but obviously we want to work with what we are trying to design. And for that, I'm going to get the styles we are going to use. And here is what our style sheet looks like. So this is just a copy and paste. So we have for everything, we have body, we are using the font uh, area. We have the background color for this. So our H1 tag, test align, center, margin, bottom. Then the form itself, display first, flex direction, follow, align item, center. The file itself, we added this. The button, we gave it this. So we can give the button a different color just to make it a bit different. Yep. Then we have the button loading, we're showing the background color. Then the over, let's change that as well. Let's use this in another adjustment. Okay. Then the CV info, which is this. This is the container that will hold the CV once we've read it. And um, this is the content for that. Then the H2 within it. So we can change the H2 a little bit to something like, I just say gray. 
Then the H3, the A tag, the A over, the UL, the express parts. And yeah, that's all the style we'll be needing. And if I close the server, I'll start it again. Yeah, we've not saved our style. Or did we not? Oh, okay. I guess we probably might need to just do a ad refresh. All right. So doing the ad refresh kind of is that. So we have the CV upload. So everything seems to be in a pattern. And um, before we move to the backend, let's have our logics in place. So for this, we are going to be making use of Cloud9 file upload. And it's quite easy to use anyway. So let me show us how to do that. So coming back to our script, we're going to have a function to undo our upload leak. So here I get a function upload or async function actually. Async function upload. And this is going to take in the events. We are using JavaScript, so load type is enforced. Then here we are going to have access to the file, which is going to be file input. Which is equals to document dot query selector, and yeah, that's our file input for query selector. Then we can pass the file itself, which is going to be file input then files this. So if no file, then we can alert. So we return an alert. Please select a file, which is fine. Cool. Then if we come back to the index.html. This is the button click. So this is the one we are taking the event for. And once we click on the button and we have a file, we want to change in the status of this. So we want to set it to loading. We want to change the test to uploading. And yeah, so on. I want to make it disabled as well. So here we can have event dot target. Then disabled it goes to true. So event the target the test content is going to upload is, is going to be uploading. Then finally, event the target dot class lists add loading. So we are adding the loading class. So if you remember in our CSS, we already defined this class. So naturally we can test to see if this is working before we proceed. So let's do a refresh. Now if you try to click order, we can't do that because we've not assigned the function to this button click. So let's do that. So the function is upload. We can just copy that. Come down to index.html, upload and pass in the event. All right. So let's come back. I think we might need to rerun the server. Okay. Let's turn back fresh. We try to upload now. It requires us to select a file. Then if we upload the file, and we click upload, then we have this. All right, looks like we are going in the right direction. So the next thing we want to do is we want to create a form data out of this such that we can now make a request to the Cloudinary endpoint. And I already have the Cloudinary profile. I'm sure you've seen that in a couple of my videos. And if you care to know how to set that up, you can leave a comment, then I'll take a look into it. But yeah, the assumption is I have my cloud information. And based on that, I'm going to create a new file called env.js. And all that would be here would be called cloud name, which is equals to something, then calls the upload presets. So those are the two fields we are going to need. I'm going to fill them in later on. So I've gone ahead to fill them and to actually get them across here, we are going to come down here and import the script earlier before the script's JS itself. So here this is going to be emp.js. And now we can come back here and just use all those information. So again, I was saying that we needed to set up our form data. So here we have const form data, which is good to new form data. The form data append file, which is that. Then form data upload presets. So we already defined the upload presets and because we included the scripts, in here, we have access to the variables defined within it. That's fine. Then next, we can make a request to Cloudinary. So here we can have a try and cache, just to ensure that we are doing things the right way. 
And here is the request. So we have const response equals to await fetch. Here is the cloudinary API. Then the cloud name as we've defined. So all we need here is just upload. We don't need to specify any other one. And this is going to be a post request. Then once we have our data, so we have data with JSON, then we get the secure URL. So we don't need any of this. So here I'm going to have let public URL across to empty for now. So now this is going to be the public URL. Okay. And here we can have cache. If there's an error, then we can have this so we we'll return the process. However, since we want to revert this back to its original state, then we can have a function for reset button. So here we can have function reset button. So it's going to take in the event and all it does is just make this back to original set. So now if we have any error, we can have a reset button that we send in the event. Okay. So with this, we would have access to the URL, which we are eventually going to set into our backend for processing. So for now, let's just console.log the public URL. And um, I guess once we are done with our processing for now, we can also reset button events. Okay, let's stop the server and let's start it again. Come down here, refresh, open our console. Okay, so let's select our file, then upload. All right, so here is our URL here, and if I click on this, we get to see the PDF file, it says. All right, so which means we are done with the Cloudinary part, and the rest is going to be uh, interacting with the backend. But before we get into the rest, I think it makes sense to just start the backend also so that we can then have something to interact with. So I'm going to open my terminal, see the desktop, then I see the extractor, then see the backend, then code backend. So here is my backend code, and for this we are going to be making use of ExpressJS, and I believe that's also quite straightforward. So yeah, um, I'm going to pull up the terminal for this, and the first thing I want to do is have um, npm init dash y. Okay, so we have that. Then I can have um, yarn install Express. Oh, okay. Yam does not use install, but add. All right, so we have the node modules, we have this, and now we can add index.ts to it, and we are good. Then for the backend as well, we are going to need an env.ts file. So we're not really using env that much. It's just to kind of let you know what um, env file we are going to need, or env variable rather. So for this, we are going to have costs open AI API key. So this is kind of assuming we are using an AMV, but we are not. So in here, we are going to have the API key. Then finally, we can export it. So module.export open AI key. So I'm going to go back to filling the open AI key so that it's available when we need to use it. All right, so we've made the preparation for the AMV, and now we can focus on the index, which is quite straightforward. And thinking ahead, because we are going to be communicating using your browser, cost seems to be an issue. And as such, we are going to add cost package. All right, so now we have the two packages we need, and we can have cost express equals to require. Express, then we can have const cross because to require cross. Then we have the cost app because to this, then we can use cross, then we can use our uh, app.use express.json. Okay, then finally we can define our path which is this and have any world. Okay, so now if we do 
Yamstat or Node JSON. So technically, I might want to come down here, change this to a start script, and um, come here to replace this with node index.js. Okay, now I can do yarn start. Yep, obviously nothing is going to happen because we've not really started the server. So we have to listen to something. So I'm going to listen to 2001, then this server is running on port this. Actually, I'm going to say server is running on. So we're going to have localhost, then the port. Then we can close this. All right, so let's start again. So now this is running on this. And actually, I want to be able to click it from here. So let me change this to HTTP into this. So I'll stop this, start again. Then if I click this, it takes me here. So here is a little word coming from our back end. Makes sense. So we come back to the back end. We have this in place. So this is going to be replaced with a post request. So we want to communicate with our CV handler. And as such, I'm going to come here and create not within node.js anyways. So in here, I'm going to have CV handler dot Yes, oh, not yes. All right. However, before we get there, we want to change this to post. So it's just the direct um, stuff. Then also we want to get access to our file URL, file URL, which is supposed to request the body. So if file URL does not exist, then we want to tell the user that the file is required. Then after that, we want to interact with the CV handler, that means this is going to be an async function. So here we're going to get a re result, but we don't have anything here. So here we are going to have a function or rather an async function and call this CV handler. Then we have not rest and that. So actually what we want to have here is just the file URL and we have this. Okay, so once we are done processing, we're going to get a result back to the user, so or rather to this endpoint. So we want to have const results, and we've not exported this, so it's going to be export default, not export default, we're not in the module. So we're going to have module.export cv handler, and here we can await cv handler into file URL. Yep. So can CV and now we request uh we require it. And yeah, once we have our result, we want to return JSON results. That's fine. So we have the setup made here, and all that requires now is to implement the open AI part of this. And as such, we need to yam add open AI. Alright, so open AI installation is completed. And now we can come back to the CV handler and do things well. So come back here, we have const open AI, which is supposed to require open AI. So that's the open AI we are requiring. Then also we want to get the key from the env.js, so const cross to require into dot env. Okay, and this will be the open AI key. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is define the open AI client. So we have const open AI is equals to new open AI into API key, which is going to be our open AI key. Then the next thing we want to do is to define this transition we want to pass to Sharp GPT to be able to undo our requests. And here is the structure here. So let's go over it. So cost instruction, you are capable OCR system. So it's trying to read a document this time around. Then extract the following information provided. Or rather, extract the following info from the provided CV to the best of your ability. Return only the JSON result in a stringify format. So so that I can just use JSON.pass to get the results. Return only the JSON result do not include any other test in the response. Return empty string for a string info you did not find in the CV. 
or zero for number info you did not find. Straight to follow the structure of this CVJSON provided below. Here's the structure of CVJSON. So here's the structure of what I wanted to extract from the CV. The first name, the last name, the, about the title, years of experience, educations, experience. So education is going to be school, degree, field, start date, end date if it's still active. Then the experience is going to be similar, company, job title, start date if it's still active. Then the skills, we have the skill and the year of experience, the languages, the social links, and the contacts. So those are the information we want to extract from the CV. And that's the instruction we're going to pass. And now that we are done with the instruction, we want to upload our file. We want to send it to the OpenAI system so that we can then work with that file. So here we're going to just type upload file to open AI's server. Okay. So const file equals to await open ai.files.create. Then we have the file, which is the file URL. Actually, this is going to be await fetch the file URL. Then we are going to specify the purpose. And the purpose for this is going to be assistance. Like that. So with this, we should be able to upload the file to OpenAI's uh, server. So the next thing is we want to create a thread. So to create a thread, we are going to have const thread equals to with OpenAI.beta.thread.create. Actually, this should be threads, then create function. Okay, so that should create the thread. Then next, we want to create an assistant. And this is where we specify the instruction, the model we want to use, the description of what we are trying to do, and the tools we want to specify. So let's create the assistant. We have const assistant equals to await open AI dot beta dot assistant creates. And here we can specify the model, which is equals to dpt-4o. Then the description of what we want to do. The description is just extract info, yeah, information from your CV. Okay. Then the instructions. So instruction is what we've defined above, unless we do not have a comma here. Then the tools we want to use tools. And this is an array, and within the array, we have the object. So here we want a type, and the type is going to be file underscore search. Cool. Then finally, we want to name the assistant. So the name is going to be CV assistant. And um, yeah, we need to close this as well. Okay. So now we want to define a prompt. So const prompt equals to read CV from file and extract the required information according to the instruction. All right. So that was the prompt we are going to use. Then next we want to create a message. However, we are going to adjust things a little bit. So we are not expecting a response from this. We are going to create a message internally that we can query later on. So it's still going to be a thread. So I'm going to remove this. So open AI beta threads, then messages dot creates. So we specify the thread dot ID. Then we specify the role. So who is the person making the message? In this case, it's going to be the user. And what exactly is the message? So the content is going to be the prompts, then the attachments. So for my attachment, I'm going to specify the file. So file underscore ID, which is file.id, there are the tools, and yeah, that's type file search. So that's the message I'm creating. So now I can close this. Okay, yep, that's looking good. So all these I've been creating are just structures. So now that I've created the message, I want to run it. So const run equals to await open AI 
beta.threads.wrongs.creates and pull. Then we specify the thread ID. Then we specify the assistant ID. Okay. So since we are waiting for the response for the run, we are going to check if status is completed. So run the status is not equivalent to completed. Then here I'm just going to throw a new error. So throw new error, fail to complete task. That's fine. Then now once we are done with that and we are certain that the run is complete, we can now extract the message. So const messages across to open AI threads message lists. I believe that's all we need to do. Yep. Then here we can get the results. So const results equals to message dot data. Then the first data is what we are looking at. So we want to check that the result content type is a test. So if it's not a test, then we can work with it. So we want to check if results dot content into zero dot type is not equivalent to test then that means we can work with it and we have this error as well then finally because we are expecting it to return the response in json string format or better still we can also kind of view what we have here first before doing anything else so i'm just going to return the result for now so pronounce result or the return. So since we've confirmed that is a test, then we have test.value. So we want to just return this for now and see what it brings us before we can confirm if we can pass it or not. So since we are throwing errors here, I think it makes sense to just have this within a try and cache as well. So here we are going to have try this, then if there's an error, cache it. Actually, yeah, maybe maybe 400 actually, not a fault theory. Okay, so here is the process we are expecting and everything should be working as expected. So here we can have VR stats. So the server is running, so here is our pot. And now we can come back to our front end. So here we've been able to get the public URL and that means all we have to do now is send this to the um, backend endpoint and get the response. So I can remove all this for now and I want to update the button test. So coming down here, test content, I'll change this to reading CV. Okay. Then now I'm going to await response let's see yeah so here we defined response and we can have another try and cache so try and cache so we have const response across to await then fetch into http local host into three thousand one or three one hundred then we can pass the objects that are needed. So the method is posts. The content type is application JSON. Then the body is stringify this, which makes sense. So here we can have let data, which you are going to obtain from the backend equals to an empty string for now, or maybe null. We can just have to let data. Then in here we can have data awaits response which fine then here we can have the cache so if there's an error yeah we can also lock the error then we set the button then we alert something went wrong which is fine so now that we have the data let's just console lock the data cool so we can remove this start the server again come to our browser refresh Okay, so line 4438 looks like we are missing something. Okay, there should be a comma here. So let's do it again. Server. Let's run this again. All right. So let's upload our file. Okay, so I guess we sent something else. Okay, this should be file. 
URL. So it means our check is working, which is fine. Let's refresh. Then also, it looks like we did not cache. Yeah, we have the error, but we didn't cache the error. That's weird. It didn't reset the button. I guess we are supposed to cache in here. And if we are supposed to cache in here, we don't need this any longer. And just to confirm that this is working now, change this back to URL and see. Okay, let's try again. Okay, that did still work. Even though we have this. Um, yep, I'm guessing the response is what we are going to check. So let's check the response. So if not response.ok, okay, then we have this. So console.log response. Okay, we've refreshed. Let's run this again. Choose a file. All right, so now we have that and we have the response. So the response we are trying to get here is, I believe we have to await the response as well. So const error equals to await response.json and console.log error. Or better still, I'll just alert the error instead. Now let's add our final tests. Let's see again. Let's refresh. Upload the file. Okay, okay. So this came in as object objects. Um, we can do JSON dot stringify error. Yeah. Let's just test this out one more time. Yeah, I guess we are debugging together. Let's refresh. Yeah, so that's the message. So message file URL is required. Okay. So according to that error, it means it should be error dot message. Okay. I believe that should work. However, we cannot put the file URL here. Then restart the server. And if we want to avoid restarting the server, we can just configure out uh, node mod, but that won't be necessary. Let's refresh. Let's select our file. Let's upload. Read the CV. Okay, it looks like my file did get in. Let's see. All right, so the mistake we made was with this. So this should be capital letter, API key. And that was why we had an error. So let's start again. Let's come back here. Let's upload. Okay, now we are reading the CV. All right, so the CV reading is done. And as I have guessed, so this is what it came up with. So we have the JSON um, string starting from here. Then we have it ending here. So as a result of that, we would need to clear out those information. And then we have access to just the JSON content, which we can then pass to become a real JSON. Okay, so let's come back to the backend. So let's come down here. So instead of returning this, we just have const rest tests. Like that, across to this. So this is result test. Then we want to get the JSON string. So const JSON string is going to be rest tests dot replace. So I want to replace the dot 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 JSON with an empty string. Then I want to remove the one at the back as well. So replace this at the back as well. Then finally, I can then have the JSON data itself. So call CV JSON equals to JSON.pass, JSON string. And finally, I can return CV JSON. Okay. All right. So we have that. I believe that's the end for the backend. And we can come back to the front end. Yep. I guess we didn't reset things once we have done. Let's refresh. And this time around, we should get a JSON result. So let's choose our file once more. Let's upload and wait for it. 
All right, so as you can see, we have it in JSON now, all the information we need to find. So now coming back to our front end, which is where we want to clean up things. So we've been able to get our data here, which is what we can a lot. So we can close this function for now. And we need a function to render that data within our CV info. And I have the function already for that. It's just about creating HTML based on some data. So that's what we are going to do. So after we have the data here, I can call this render CV info and pass the data. Then finally reset button event. And we are good. So let's quickly go over the render CV info function. So this gets the CV info um, ID based on ID. So this is the order. Then we set it to display block because by default it's display none. If we come back to the CV info, display is none. And that's why it's not showing anything. Then um, coming back to the scripts, the inner HTML, it should ask something before we want to remove that. Then we get the result from here, from data. Let's confirm if we have that actually there is no result from data it's just data so yep i guess the results is data as well okay so here is the basic info so html all this then we add the basic info into the yeah, going to see before it starts adjacent HTML before end, and we have that. So yeah, we are in that experiences. So I believe the rest is just how you want to design your content, and I'm not really going to focus too much on that. I think the focus is more on implementing how we communicate with OpenAI itself. And now we can start the server again and have our final results. So let's refresh. Let's choose our file and upload. So ready CV, let's wait for it. All right, so reading is done. And as you can see, we've rendered our information. And I believe this is going to be important to some of us how to interact with uh, OpenAI using your files. So you upload your file and you want to have some question. Uh, one of the practical use case is reading your CV. And with this, we are done with this experiment. If you enjoy it, leave a thumbs up. And if you've not subscribed to the channel, kindly endeavor to subscribe. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.